I've just done um, a post where, where I personally have been considering, you know, you know I'm not, some of the things I, I share are to teach, but some things of me just putting my thoughts down and thinking, what, what, what is all this? What, you know, investigating things. So, um, Theophilus, Brother C. Theophilus was talking about spiritual discipline and I was thinking, discipline, that's an interesting word. Let's look into that. What does it mean in a third level context? Um, and so you can read that, it's on my timeline. Um, I still think people aren't quite getting this, which is, th which is this. Adam and Eve moved their hand a little bit and picked a fruit, just one fruit, just one fruit that was disallowed them Satan used that to initiate them into a whole new order. But nevertheless, it was a decision, an internal decision brought about by deceptions and lies, absolute untruths. And they made a movement, a simple movement that came out of an inward clicking, an inward decision. God's life was not enough. And they had to do something to be something. And a meme of that we saw in Hitler's time, the door on, the, you know, over the gate of Auschwitz. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, um... Oh yeah, Arbeit, Arbeit macht frei, which is you can you can get your freedom through work. Yeah, right, digging their own graves, <laughs> freedom as in death. <laughs> but that sort of that, in a nutshell, is is the whole of the satanic order. So therefore, I don't think you're fully getting this. How big this thing is called third level called the holiest place which far from being um you, you know this hyper spiritual thing it, it is hyper spiritual because it is jesus but that's not the point the point is uh it's 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 just this big step this big internal thing <laughs> Some people get this straight away as soon as they give their life to Christ. Maybe they are coming from such a bad place. Mary Magdalene had seven demons plaguing her and she really, really did not want any more men inside her. And she wanted something better. She was better than this. She wanted something better out of life. And uh, Jesus came and set her free from seven demons. But somehow she knew more instantly than the 12 disciples. It took another 42 months, or, or you know, however much it was, to actually fully grasp what was on offer. And this is the thing, after 6,000 years, are you getting this? Are you getting this? We are closing the door to Genesis 3. It might not look it all over the place. And, and it's so massive that people cannot see it. So, as you know, it's like the Catholics looking at Luther when Luther said, did you know it's all by faith? Catholics couldn't understand what he was on about. To them, he was just some reforming guy, a rebel, heretic, splitting Europe apart and bringing about the Thirty Years' War. I couldn't see what he was saying. The just shall live by faith. It is based on the righteousness of Christ alone. They couldn't see it. But nobody in this day can really see why it is thousands of people have now left church and particularly the fourth quartile, the John type of person who sees through all things. They say, you still think 
it's worth carrying on as normal, especially without us, without the entire four court, fourth quartile. They've all left. <laughs> and you're still carrying on as normal. Like, you, you know, like Christianity just carries on as normal. You are exactly behaving exactly like in the Old Testament where the Ark of the Covenant had been removed by the Hittites, Philistines, wheeled off in a cart. And, and you're still carrying on the same routine, of Le Levitical routine. It died... 40 years ago, possibly as many as, what, 80 years ago. Is it 80 now? 70 years ago. The, really, the day George H. Warnock, who Americans couldn't care less about for toffees because they're that stupid. <laughs> he, from the moment he penned Feast of Tabernacles, that was it. And then Norman Grubb, coming to America, staying with his granddaughter, squeezed out from the very mission, world evangelistic missionary organisation that he and C.T. Studd formed, or the Lord formed through him, squeezed out from that, living with his granddaughter, then finally and ending up his days in America and penning, <laughs> yes, I am amidst a dead silence <laughs> and he he was sharing that in small groups everywhere and nobody in america can see what was going on americans are clueless it's like, but if they're clueless what's negative clueless which is britain so we're even further back you haven't really got this have you <laughs> the second Paul really wrote Galatians 2.20. That was it to the whole of Genesis 3. C catching in that kernel the total solution to every single manifest curse still in the earth. We got into this mess by believing a supernatural lie with no basis in manifestation. We believed a spirit, something that it was not tangible, no physical proof whatsoever. We believed that lie and into being came death, entropy and a collapsing universe. The way out is, again, without any manifestation whatsoever, without any proof whatsoever, but taking by faith, this time not a lie, but the total truth that Jesus has taken us all inside him on the cross because we are spirit not brains on sticks like Noah Harari lies to you, Juval Noah Harari, and all psychiatrists and their gospel, their gospel of the brain, the fiction of the gospel of the brain. No, we are spirit and we died with Christ. How? How does intercession work? I haven't a clue, but it is really handy that we now have some sort of quantum idea of science flying around because it helps with these sort of concepts. I do not understand a place outside of time. I've never lived in a place outside of time, at least in this physical form. I have never lived there. So I can't explain it to you how it works. I'm just saying it's that big. It is now. No longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live not having a intellectual faith. I live by the faith of Christ himself. 
He can't even trust me with my faith in him. It is now, now, no longer I who live. And that, that little tiny verse is literally the revelation, the cornerstone of all eternity to manifest starting today, now. It's that big. It, it literally renders the whole of Catholicism rubbish. It renders the whole, the whole of everything evangelical as totally out of date and backward. It renders the whole of charismatic trying to get into the presence of God. It's not that any of those things aren't valid in their context, but the context is now the correct rock on which to build. Before, everything we were building and doing was still inside the Genesis 3 lie. And prophets couldn't articulate that, but they walked into the building and they sensed it. You are phony. You're trying to get into something for 20 minutes or half an hour. You get into it and then after a brief while, the dominating person of the false pastor, who, the usurping idiot, that has, <laughs> has taken upon himself one particular ministry listed in Ephesians 4, not mentioned actually a lot at all, and made himself out to be the grand pharaoh, the pontiff, the Masonic high priest of, every, of everybody. And then he steps in and everyone goes back into Genesis 3 again while they're listening to a lecture, a series of intellectual thoughts. And they go out the door, the same Genesis 3 person that came in. You'd have to go through the same 20 minutes again to, to get refocused. All that's happening is people are refocusing from a place that they should never have left in the first place. And that is the genius of Norman Grubb's book, Yes, I Am. That is the genius of Feast of Tabernacles, G.H. Warnock. Everyone on the earth is literally, from this moment, you're either in those two things or you're completely backward. You're completely backward. New Age just isn't precise enough. New Age is just a rip-off trying to excavate every last thing you can from the cross without mentioning the actual exchange, the satanic exchange that took place. It's a complete rip-off. That's the truth. The truth is, as truly as I live, God says, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, which is where he dwells, which is the third place in God's temple, which is the holiest place, which is now normality because the veil in his body was ripped, is now normal life for man, will fill the earth. The knowledge of the glory of God will fill the earth. And we're going to explore it and what it means spiritually, what it means in the Holy Spirit, what it means it naturally, what it, mean, what it means to a life that actually has no reference to sin at all, only knows the will of God, doesn't stray to the left, doesn't stray to the right. It's that big. People looking on at us <laughs> as this bizarre bunch of people who are... <laughs> you know, off on our own sort of thing. No, we've just seen we've just seen what reality is. That's reality. Everything else is crumbling around it. Right now, everything is crumbling right around this as it comes out into the open. 